Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bowling Green CP Church on this last Sunday of October, the 29th, 2023, two days before the candy getting season begins. So you start on Tuesday, you go through Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, Easter. Uh, we all do our part to contribute to cavities and juvenile diabetes. So uh, it is exciting. We had a preview last night. Thanks to everybody who came out to the fall festival who worked hard to set that up, make that happen. Uh, we had a fun time, played games, got candy, ate some chili, some chicken nuggets. So thank you, everyone, the CE committee who made that possible last night. We had a fun time. And uh, I think it was Mary Beth that mentioned earlier before Sunday school, how good is God? It poured on Friday. It was sunny yesterday and dry and warm so we could be outside and, and now it's pouring today. So it, he, every, he, he, he worked with us. He helped us out. So we appreciate God doing that. We have a number of announcements if you want to look in your bulletins and check things out. If you pull out your insert, actually, we'll go through some of these things as well. Loaves and fishes. If you see those little boxes on the, along the sides of the sanctuary on the ledge, if you haven't grabbed one of those yet, please grab one of those. Uh, we will pick those up. We'll collect those two weeks from this Sunday. So two weeks from today, that is November the 12th, uh, if you would like to get one of those. And that is going to, uh, the, I think, the Children's Food Program in Venezuela, I believe, is where Loaves and Fishes has gone this year. So that's going to Hungry Kids in Venezuela. Uh, shoe boxes. If you picked up one of those shoe boxes for Operation uh, Christmas Child, we need those next Sunday so that we can get them to the distribution center so they can be shipped and make it on time. So the shoe boxes, if you filled up one of those, please bring that by next Sunday so we can get that out. Um, Christmas Angels, that's coming December 3rd, so put that on next month's agenda. That, that is coming up. But we are starting to collect for Thanksgiving baskets. You look there on the what you can bring. So if you are piano side, green beans, mac and cheese, red beans, cereal, you don't even have to think about it. We made it easy so that you can know exactly what to bring, what day to bring it. If you're organ side, Corn, soup, rice, peanut butter. Now, I, I don't know who put that list together, but I like that because that sounds better than if you're on the left side or on the right side because then we get political and we don't want that to happen. So uh, piano side, organ side, you see the schedule, what to bring. Thanksgiving baskets, we're going to start collecting for that. Or if you just like to give monetarily for that so we can buy turkeys and hams uh, towards the end. We, don't, we, don't, we buy those perishable things right up at the end. Let's see, loaves and fish, shoe boxes. Thank you again. The yard sale was a week ago Saturday, so we, we raised a little over $2,700 for missions and outreach, so that is fantastic. Thank you to everybody who helped, who bought, who, who brought in stuff, brought friends, uh, whatever you did, so we do appreciate that very much. And then lastly, uh, coats for the uh, Stuff the Cruiser. So if you see those coats out there in the fellowship hall, we are starting to collect coats for Stuff the Cruiser, so if you are uh, going through your closet or if you just happen to have just moved and you found stuff you didn't know that you had, which happens every time that you move, and you found an old coat or two that uh, you don't need anymore or don't wear anymore, uh, we would love to have it. And then I think our youth are going to, our youth and kids are going to work on getting those over to the police cruiser in front of the Bowling Green Police Department. So uh, please bring those in and hang them on the rack. I think those are most of the announcements that I have. Does anybody else have an announcement they would like to make? All right. Well, if not, I have one last announcement. Uh, the first Sunday of December, uh, which will be the first Sunday of Advent as well, uh, we're going to start a women's study during the Sunday school hour on Sunday morning. Uh, if you would like to be part of that, if you are a lady, um, you can talk to my wife, uh, Brittany Birch. So if that's something you are interested in, uh, please talk to Brittany about a women's study uh, during the Sunday school hour. And uh, it's a particular study she's already picked out, but you can ask her as many questions as you want after the service about that, uh, which means I get to watch the kids. So you can come and talk to me and the kids in the back of the sanctuary if you want, or you can talk to Brittany about the women's study starting the first Sunday of November, or December. And if you already have a Sunday school class, please stay in your Sunday school class. This is just in addition to what we already offer. So uh, that's it. That's all the announcements that I have. Does anybody else have something they would like to share? If not, if you would bow your heads with me this morning and let us open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out on us. We thank you for time to, to gather, for fellowship, to, uh, to 
play games and to, to trick or treat and to eat candy and, and dinner and just enjoy one another's company. Father, we thank you for the privilege of serving, of giving to those in need, whether it's a coat or food for Thanksgiving or a shoebox that will go somewhere in this world to a child who is in desperate need of it that we don't know, but you know that child, you know those children. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of working in your kingdom. We pray that you would bind us together this morning as a church family. Whether we are here in the sanctuary, if we are online on YouTube or on Facebook, we pray that you would unite us by filling each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you would join me this morning in our preparation for worship, if you would read, respond with the bold, I'll read the fine, the regular print. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to the Lord with songs of joy. God is God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. Amen. If you're able this time, if you would stand, we will sing our first song this morning.
next song is called Make Me a Servant. Listen closely to the words as you sing them. May it be your prayer. Can be seated. Now, one of the things that we do when we take up the offering here is if you filled out your uh, dinner reservation for Wednesday night, of course, uh, uh, that's for our meat in the middle and for the meal that comes so we can get a head count and know how many people to prepare food for. But maybe just take a picture of that with your phone because the prayer list is on the other side. And we have a number of answers to prayers in the last couple of weeks here at Bowling Green CP Church. Some of those answers to prayers are still recovering, can't quite be back yet to worship. But there's still more people that we need to be praying for. So as we get ready to take up the offering and you get ready to put in your dinner reservations, I, I don't know that any pastor's ever said this before, but why don't you go ahead and pull out your phones, take a picture, check Facebook real quick, that's fine. Uh, and then put these in your offerings in the plate as they come by. If you would uh, hear our offertory thought this morning, it comes from Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. With that thought, I'll ask the ushers to come forward and receive the Lord's offering this morning.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, a cup of cold water to somebody who is thirsty and tired and hot. A jacket to somebody who is cold and is freezing and needs it. A Thanksgiving meal to a family who is hungry and cannot purchase one for themselves. Father, I pray that you would take these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, and that we would use them to give water to the thirsty, to feed the hungry, to clothe those who are cold and weary. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Music this morning is Pastor Zalm's three children, Blessing, Charity, and Jariah. Come on up, guys. They're singing a beautiful song entitled Grace, written by Laura Story. And they do a beautiful job of it. Giving up. 
Good morning. We're going to cook today. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to talk about to be an onion Christian today. What do you think? Uh, how it's going to be look? How it's going to look like to be onion Christians? Anybody? We need to be around Christian, or we need to be a little strong smell Christian. What do you think? Any idea? Yes. Are you cooking an onion? I'm not cooking an onion. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to peel the onion. Is it an onion? Does it look the same? No. It looks the same, right? It's the same thing, right? So, whether you peel off the layer or uh, whatever uh, remains, it's all the same. And you're gonna see more here. If I cut it, can you see the inside? It's all the same. Just get smaller, right? It's all the same. It just gets smaller, and it smells the same too, right? See, in the Bible, uh, God said here, um, I'm going to read Fast Samuel 16, 7. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So, God wants us to be the same from the outside and the inside as well. Just like onions, but are we the same outside and inside not all the time right sometimes you may have some friends in school you really hate them but you, you just give them a big smile and you like you just say hi but you just say, I want to beat up that friend you know yep. ever happened that we are human right but God, God can forgive us if we confess our sin and the Bible said first John 1 9 God is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. So if we ask God to forgive us for what we think about other people, the hate or uh, the, the thing that goes inside, and if we ask God to cleanse us, He's going to cleanse us from all our sins and we'll be uh, the same from the inside and the outside. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the lesson that you have given to us for the children and for all of us. Lord, you created the whole world and you even created the onions for us. And what an object lesson that we can learn from onions. That Lord, we should be the same from the outside and from the inside. Help us, Lord, to be faithful and to be um, authentic Christians in our walk with you. Please watch over these children and all the children here and those who go to school. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, we do have um, some updates to give you. Jim Smith's surgery went well on Tuesday. He is home. He went home on Thursday, so he is doing well. Uh, let's see, Dave Carroll also had a procedure on Thursday. I, 
Wednesday. Dave Carroll's procedure is on Wednesday, so he is, I think that went well. I don't know if he is home yet. Does anybody have an update past then uh, for Wednesday for Dave Carroll? The procedure went well that it was supposed to, and hopefully that infection is, is clearing up finally. Um, please continue to keep Jim Worthington in your prayers. As far as I know, he is still at the med center after falling and breaking his hip. He has been surgically repaired, but he, is, he has a long road ahead of him, so please keep Jim Worthington in your prayers. Do we have other, um, keep Chris Grice in your prayers. She's recovering, doing well, less settle, uh, still recovering, doing well. Um, do we have other prayer requests to mention this morning? Gary Martin. Gary Martin. All right, Teresa's dad having a stent put in Tuesday. Yes, Brenda, sorry, I forgot your grandson. His name was Timmy Howes. if there aren't any others this morning, let's bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we, we just want to thank you for all the answers to prayer. We come and we ask and you answer and we come and we ask and you answer and we come and we ask and you answer. Lord, we thank you for never growing weary of us coming to you and asking when we are in need, when we are suffering, when our brothers and sisters are, are struggling. Thank you for those who have come through surgeries and illnesses. We thank you for Les, for Jim, for, um, for Chris. Father, we lift up those who are continuing to, to struggle with illnesses or, or with heart conditions, health conditions. We lift Jim Worthington up to you. We pray that you're watching over him. Heavenly Father, we lift Dave Carroll up to you this morning. We pray that that infection would, that you would, Clear his body of it once and for all. We lift Gary up to you as he gets ready to have a stent put in on, on Tuesday. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over him, that everything would go well and there would be no complications. We lift Timmy up to you. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over him. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would watch over those of our church family who can't be here this morning for whatever reason. Watch over those who are in different seasons of life and a season that might have them down and and unable to come to church. Pray, Lord, that you would restore them, that you would restore them to a better quality of life and restore them to us, their church family. We pray for all of these things, praying as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, last week we looked at a passage in Matthew 22 in which Jesus was asked a question. And this morning, we're going to look at a passage in Matthew 22 in which Jesus is asked a question. And so he, he answers a lot of questions in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And it kind of got me to thinking this week because we have all done that, haven't we? Where one question just leads to another that leads to another that leads to another. And it happens a lot with our kids. So if you've ever had to answer that question, why, uh, with your kids. And you tell them it's 8 o'clock, it's time to go to bed, bedtime is 8 o'clock, and they might ask you why. Why is bedtime at 8 o'clock? Well, because you're growing. You're, you, you need sleep. You need energy. You, you need a lot of sleep and energy. You're young. You're growing. That's just the way that it works. Well, why, why do I need that sleep? Well, because if you don't get enough sleep tonight, when you get up and go to school in the morning, you're going to be tired and you're not going to be able to learn the things that you are supposed to learn. Well, why do I need to learn things in school? Well, you need to learn things in school because there's just certain things that you need to know as an adult when you get out of school and... and and you just need to know them. Not algebra, but everything else you're going to need to know once you get out of school. Honestly, who's used algebra since high school? One, two, that's it. two people. You just, there's things that you need to know when you become an adult. Well, why do I need to know things when I'm an adult? Well, because when you're an adult, you're going to need to get a job. Well, why am I going to have to get a job? Well, you're going to have to get a job because when you're 18, you're out. 
Like, that's it. You're going to have to have a job. At 18, you're out. That's... <laughs> Don't worry, Lucy. We're not going to kick you out as soon as you turn 18. We won't do that. The rent will be steep, but we will not just kick you out of the house. <laughs> Jesus is answering a series of questions, and the one that we looked at last week, he answered with some sternness because the, Fer- the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians, they showed up with a question about taxes trying to trap Jesus in his answer. They either wanted to get him arrested by the Roman military, by the Roman authorities, or they wanted to get, him, uh, to get the crowd mad at him. They wanted to just really severely damage his popularity with the people that he was teaching and healing and providing food for and everything else. But today, it's an honest question. And Jesus gives an honest answer to the honest question. So before we read Matthew 22, verses 34 through 46, let's bow our heads this morning and let us pray and ask God to teach us. Heavenly Father, we ask this morning that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us to give us your wisdom and your understanding through what we will read today in the scriptures that your Son, our Lord and Savior, taught. We pray, Lord, that we would take it to heart and that it would lead us to godliness and to holiness, that we would look more and more like the image of our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen. All right, verses 34 through 46 in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And ask that God would bless the reading of his word this morning. So here they come again. This is the third question that Jesus has been asked in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 22. As I said, last week we looked at the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians, which was an odd mix of people. They were kind of at odds with each other politically, religiously, uh, and they had a question designed to trap Jesus about taxes. And Jesus gave a masterful response in the way that he responded to that, asking for a coin and said, whose image is this on the coin? And they said, Caesar's. And he says, well, then give to God what is God's and to Caesar what is Caesar's. He took a question about taxes and turned it into, who do you belong to? Do you belong to God or do you belong to the world? He made it a question of faith. We didn't read from the middle part, the second question, when the Sadducees come and they have a question for Jesus that was designed to prove that that they were right and that everybody else was wrong. And that was in verses 23 through 33. And then after Jesus silences the Sadducees, as we started out reading there in our first verse this morning, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them is an expert in the law. You remember last week we mentioned that when the Herodians, the Herodians and the disciples of the Pharisees come to Jesus together, it was kind of one of those, the enemy of my enemy is my friend sort of situations. Maybe we can get, this, get rid of this man and we both will benefit from that. Well, then Jesus silenced the Sadducees. And the the Pharisees didn't really like the Sadducees, and the Sadducees didn't really like the Pharisees. So I think what's happened here is is the Pharisees get together and they say, well, if the enemy of my enemy is my friend, then what about the enemy of my enemy of my enemy, and then his enemy, and then maybe, well, maybe Jesus isn't such a bad guy after all. Let's, Let's go ask him a question. Let's see if we can figure out where he's at. Because this question isn't to test Jesus, Or sorry, it's not to trap Jesus, it's just to test him. So an expert in the law comes up and he says, Teacher, there in verse 36, which is the greatest commandment in the law? It's one of those fun theological questions, isn't it? What is the greatest commandment in the entirety of the law, Jesus? And while we're at it, why don't we try to figure out why God created mosquitoes? We'll just knock both of those things out in one conversation. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, if you 
if you've ever read through the Gospels, if you've studied them closely, Jesus doesn't often answer a question directly. He's often kind of mysterious. He, he did that last week with the question designed to trap him about taxes. He diverted the question with his answer to a much more important topic than taxes. But this time, Jesus just gives a straight-up answer to a straight-up question. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus says in verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with every fiber of your being, says Jesus, with your heart, with your soul, with your mind. And then the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you don't start with yourself, just in case you were wondering. I have heard that taught. I've read it in books. Well, you've got to start by loving yourself. Then you can love your neighbor. Then you can love God. That's, that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's not saying you start by loving yourself. He assumes that you're really good at it already. And we generally are, aren't we? We generally do an okay job at loving ourselves. Even when we're angry at ourselves. Even when we have messed up. Even when we have really, you know, really, really messed up. Min minus the actual masochist who is the exception to the rule we do a pretty good job at loving ourselves. And we do a pretty good job at messing up. We do both of those things. So I don't know if, you, if anybody has ever tried this before. You went to the doctor. He checked you out. That lab work came back. And then he said something or she said something like, you need to cut out the sugar. You need to cut out the candy, the sweets, the cookies, whatever it is. Anybody ever had that report when you have gone to visit the doctor? They say, you need to eat healthier so that you can have a better life, so that you can have a better quality of life. And you said, okay, doc, I am all for it. He, they scared you to death there in the room with the report, told you what's coming down the road if you don't change that diet. And then wouldn't you know it, it's in October, and that's when Halloween rolls around. And so you've got that diet all set up. Maybe you've got the app on your phone. You're going to track all those calories. And then your kids come home with buckets and buckets of candy after Halloween, and you mess up that diet. Kids go to bed. You see it there on the kitchen table or in their bedrooms or wherever that candy might be stashed, but you're the parent. You know where it is. We, we know where the candy is. And I know which kind of candy my kids like and they don't like. And then you break that diet. You grab a handful or two or three. They won't notice because it's an ungodly amount of candy that's in that bucket. And yes, this is self-confession time in case you are wondering. So now not only do you break your diet, now you're a thief, right? Two things. <laughs> but how many of you ever gave up on yourself? that's it. It's over. I am worthless. I am unlovable. I don't deserve for anyone to care about me because I can't keep my diet. I stole candy, candy from my kids. It's, it's, it's over. I am not worth loving. We don't do that, do we? We don't give up on ourselves. But have you ever said that about somebody that you know? Somebody that hurt you? somebody that betrayed you, maybe you shared something in confidence and they let everybody on the street know or everybody at work know, and they finally said, that's it, it's, this has happened a thousand times, that, that best friend is now my former best friend and I give up on that person and they are dead to me and I want nothing left to do, nothing more to do with them. And Jesus says, you know, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. You don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your neighbor, no matter what they have done. So when the guy comes, when the Pharisee comes and says, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus says to love you, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't give up on anybody, says Jesus, because you don't give up on yourself. And he quotes from the law when he answers that question. He quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5 which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. 
And then he quotes Leviticus 19, 18, which says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. I found something this week as I was studying this passage that made me feel a whole lot better. It really did. It made me feel a whole lot better. because One, one scholar put it this way. The primary component of biblical love is not affection, but commitment. I want to read that again. The primary component of biblical love is not affection, but commitment. So you don't have to like the person. You just have to love the person. Because let's be honest. We're all unlikable from time to time, aren't we? I've always thought if you know somebody long enough, they will give you good reason not to like them. And if you know me long enough, I will give you good reason not to like me at some point. But you don't have to like your neighbor to love your neighbor. Love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Mark records the same conversation in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 12. He adds a little bit. After Jesus gives that answer, the Pharisee who asked the question in Mark chapter 12, verses 32 through 34, says this. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that, the Lord, that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of heaven. And from, that, from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Now, Matthew doesn't put that part in our passage this morning. He does put there at the end of verse 46 that no one dared to ask Jesus any more questions. Instead, what Matthew puts between that statement and Jesus answering the first question is a question of Jesus. Jesus now asks the Pharisees a question. He says to the Pharisees in verse 42, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared ask him any more questions. So Jesus was asked an honest question by the Pharisee. What is the greatest commandment in all the law? Jesus gave an honest answer, and then he asks the Pharisees an honest question. He says, who is the Messiah? Whose son? And they say, well, the son of David, which is right. That's what God had promised in the Old Testament. He had told King David, you will always have a son on the throne in the nation of Israel from here until eternity. And so Jesus asks the Pharisees, well, whose son is that? Well, the son of David. And the problem is, at this point, the only thing left of David are his bones. David's been dead for hundreds of years. And Jesus quotes Psalm 110 to the Pharisees. He says, well, how can that be? How is that possible that David's son is going to sit on the throne and that David calls him Lord? Because that just doesn't work. Because the father is always the father and the son is always the son and the son cannot be superior to the father. I think what Jesus is telling the Pharisees is you're looking for the wrong type of Messiah. You're looking for a blood and bones genetic descendant of King David, and that doesn't work. David can't call his great, 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 great grandson Lord unless he's a pre existent Christ, unless he's a pre existent son. And we know that. Jesus prays that in John chapter 17, verses 4 and 5. He says to the Father in heaven, he says, I brought you, brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus was there before the world began. That's how David can call him Lord. And if you're wondering what all this has to do with keeping the commandments, that's why we listen to Jesus. That's why he has authority over every one of our lives. That's why when Jesus says, this is the greatest commandment, this is what you are supposed to do, we say, yes, sir, that is what we will do. We will love the God, Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. We will love our neighbor as ourself. Because let's be honest, how many of you like being told what to do? Not one of you. Nobody in here likes being told what to do. 
No, we don't, do we? We really don't like being told what to do. But there are people we're supposed to listen to when your mom and dad say, eat your vegetables. And you say, why? Well, because I'm your dad, that's why, and I told you to eat your vegetables. When your boss says, be at work at 8 a.m., and you say, why? Your boss says, well, if you want paid on payday, you'll be here at 8 a.m. So that you can keep that job, so you can pay those bills, so you can move out of your mom and dad's house. You will be here at 8 a.m., or you don't have a job for very long, do you? When Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, and don't ever, ever, ever give up on your neighbor, you say, why would I do that? And Jesus says, because I'm the pre-existent Christ, and I have the right to tell you what to do. And then we say, yes, sir. We will do that. And it's important, it's an important thing to remember, and it's an important thing to keep that in mind, because following Jesus in this lifetime is the most important thing that we do. And the longer I live, I think I learn more and more as human beings, we have such an incredible capacity to make the small things that are really not that important seem like the huge things, and they, make, they seem like they are really, really important. And then we take the really, really important things in life and we minimize them to make them seem trivial, like they're not all that important. How many of you have ever gone through something where you've gone to make a purchase and you had to sign multiple pages of paper? Has anybody ever done that? You show up there, wherever it is, whatever it is that you're buying, and they say something like, okay, uh, Mr. Birch, thank you for coming in today. Uh, we're going to finish this purchase for you. You're going to need to sign an initial at the bottom of pages two and three on these forms, if you would, right down there in the bottom corner. And so you initial and you sign on the bottom of the pages and say, okay, now that you've done pages two and three, we're going to need you to flip over. We're going to need you to sign and date on the bottom of pages six and seven. And so you sign and you date on the bottom of pages six and seven, and they say, thank you for doing that. Now that you have signed on the bottom of page seven, we need you to go back to page three, and if you would strike out the initials that you put on the bottom of page three, and then jump to page eight, and we need you to sign and date on the bottom of page eight. We appreciate that. Now if you would go to page nine, you are gonna sign and date that. Page nine, by the way, is that you promise you will never use the product for anything other than its intended use, just to prevent bodily harm, all of those sorts of things. They say thank you for signing at the bottom of page eight and nine. If you'd sign and date the bottom of page 10, you will promise not to use the product at all, which we would really appreciate that. <laughs> and we'll give you a 10% discount if you would do that. So you sign and date on the bottom of page 10, and they say, thank you, I'm going to make three copies, three certified copies. I will file one with your insurance, one with the state. You can keep one for your records at home and one for us. And then once all that is done and filed, you can finish, and you can go buy your electric toothbrush. And we appreciate your business this morning. I know that, that you can get the electric toothbrush, that's fine. But a house, a car, an insurance policy, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You sign your life away. And Brittany and I got married, one signature. That was it. Second most important decision of our lives. Sign here, date here, that's it, you're done. Your husband and wife, to one of you die, they stick together, have kids, whatever it might be, one signature. You, you know, in the state of Tennessee, this cracked me up. The first wedding I officiated, the bride and the groom, they didn't even sign the marriage license. They didn't get married to one another. They didn't even put their name on the line. Just the wedding officiant. You're the only person with your name on the line for all those couples in Tennessee who get married. You decide to follow Jesus, which is the single most important decision of your life. You don't sign anything, do you? But did you know Jesus does? He signs your name in that book of life that's up in heaven when you say that you are going to be my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. I accept the forgiveness that you provided on the cross when you shed your blood. And because you are the pre-existent Christ and because you said so, I will follow you heart, mind, and soul and love my neighbor as myself. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would convict all of our hearts that following your Son, our Lord and Savior, will be the single most important thing in each and every one of our lives. That we would love you heart, 
mind and soul, that we would love our neighbors as ourselves. There would not be anybody walking this earth that we would ever think about giving up on. Because you didn't give up on us. When we were at our lowest, when we were at our worst, you sent your son and he came and he offered himself on that cross. Willingly laid down his life for a whole world that would have been so much easier to just give up on. We pray, Lord, that you would give us that same heart for each and every person that we run into each and every day. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you would stand, our hymn of consecration this morning is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Let's stand and sing that together. receive the benediction this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen.